Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the Julia wrapper. Uh, the wrapper is a way of calling GMT from a programming language and uh, taking advantage of both environments. So it means you can use GMT entirely from that environment and at the same time use all the commodities that we get by using a programming language uh, to do well, all operations that we can do and use other package and so forth. So if we go to the GMT main site, which we can do by opening it through the command line, if you type GMT dots site, you are aiming to the GMT main site, and you scroll down, you see here that we have a link for the GMT interfaces. We have currently three interfaces, one from MATLAB, another one for Julia, and a third one for Python. I'm going to talk now about the uh, Julia uh, interface. If I click this, I'm taken to the, GM, to the GMT Julia uh, site, and if I scroll down a little, I'll see the installation ins the instructions. It is basically only this. You type these on the command line of Julia and you get GMT installed. So, demonstrating, if I open one Julia, this, this is called the REPL in the, in the slang. And if I type brackets add GMT and that would, it returned, it would install me everything that is needed. I'm not going to do it because I have it already. Once you install it, you use it using the using command. I also will prefix it with a timer to see the time it takes. Time using GMT. And it takes about 1.3 seconds in this version. The developing version is a bit faster. It's less than one second. So after this, we are ready to start typing commands that use GMT. But instead of doing that from this environment, I'll go and show you from a uh, uh, notebook that he runs inside Visual Studio Code. So I minimize these, open that notebook, and in that notebook, which is in, in the GitHub, this, this notebook, if I type, if I click the manual, oh, shoot, yes, we are directed to the manual page of the Julia wrapper. There you have the manuals here of the pro the models that have been the the, the manuals have been uh, converted more the manuals of more, more functions many things in here and in the front ones you have examples of things that you can do with this wrapper. But this is all done with GMT. It's the syntax that is rather different than the one that I use it from the the common line. So you can do all of these and uh, if you click. You have the, the instructions that uh, were used to create each of these plots. There are many examples here. Let us go back to our notebook where we start. The, we are going to start using it. So to start, I have to use, run the using, load the package. It takes, that's why I put the, the, the timer before. It, things in the, in the notebook takes a little longer to run than, than in a command line directly. Uh, okay, and now as an example, we can download a, a part of a, a grid uh, with bathymetry and topography that is stored on the GMT server. As we have seen already, we can do that using the hat prefix in the, in the name and giving a specific name of something that exists. So the command is grdcut, as we are used. This is the grid we want to download. And instead of saying minus R for the region, you spell it region. Well, the AS alias, you could say also limits. And then is the name of the area. In this case, this is the area that covers the north and south of Atlantic. If I do this, I download the data. And the result is stored not in a file, but is in, the, in this variable. That for consistency, I call it just a G. It's a structure for those of you that know what structures are that have fields with the, the array and metadata. If I type show G, it will show me part of beginning and ending of that, the, the, the array, the grids, 
the numbers, and also some of the metadata that is stored in the grid. The minimum, the maximum, the increments, things, and also in this case, because the grid is less storied uh, projection information, you see that also displayed in here. And this is a, an element that you can manipulate like a matrix. For example, although we don't need, because we know that already, you can just say, calculate the minimum and the maximum of that grid, which in Julia is the function extrema that computes both of them. So we calculate them and here we have them. So in, this is stored in the, in the header or in the metadata. This one was computed from, from the array. Of course, they are equal, otherwise we would have a problem. Means if this is a, a, a grid, an element, a structure, we can do calculations, well, it's using certain facilities of the language. You can now do all the calculations we want of that of that grid. For example, if I want to add ten thousand calculate compute the square root, divide by two, I would type like this, which is very familiar, for example, for the calculators that we all have using. I want to well, the next line would calculate the minimum and the maximum. Uh, and this one showed the, the extrema of this one. I'm not Honestly, I'm not going to run this one here because there is a recent bug that would interfere with the next next example. It, the, the, the color the color scale would be be ruined. So okay, it, this is kind of num an example of numerical things we can do. But let's say, well, I want to see the contents of that grid. I want an image of it. Uh, in plain GMT, you would calculate uh, first uh, a color palette, and then you use GRD image either with illumination or not, say about the projection, about the annotations, and so forth. Here, well, here is the same, but this function EM show does that, most of that for us, by guessing those, those values. So I'm saying, show, make me an image of that grid. We download the G, let it guess the projection, use the color map Geo, it will adapt to the limits of the grid, uh, use automatic uh, shade, Illumination, uh, plot coastlines, and add the color bar on the on the uh, on the right side. Well, say there are no minus, nothing. They have names of the variables that do the operations. So, running these, this time it takes a little longer. Running these get us this map. So you see, you have the grid with shaded illumination. We have the coastlines. And we have the color bar here on the outside. Of course, these are default values, default well, well default values. If you don't like these, you can fine tuning, but fine tune them. But in that case, the instruction will have to grow a little bit. For example, shade, you could import, tell here the direction of the shading illumination and all the parameters that you have in the in, in GMT, you can put them here as well. But of course, this would grow a little bit. But okay, let's say that uh, I want to add more things to our to my figure that only the color and the coastlines. For example, the example here show how. But one thing, if you want to do more things, is no longer the M show command that you have to use because this one is a, a short, easy one that you don't. You just tell uh, run the command, you get the, you get a single command, and you get an image. If you want to do more things and you add more elements. We go back to use, for example, the GRD, GRD image. So again, GRD image will do the same as the EM show above, but does not close the PostScript file. It means it is open for us to add more elements. For example, I want to use the, I want to plot the maritimum E zones, which I have stored in uh, in on the computer as this file that is. A shape file that is compressed, zipped. So we can read the shape file directly and zipped. Well, for that we use uh, another facility of the, the Julia wrapper, which is that it, it also wraps many of the GDAL as well as GEOS as well as PROJ functions. So it's a rather complete package and you can access them also directly because they will also wrap it inside this GMT wrapper. So. Uh, I, I can read this shape file compressed directly with this GMT read function. And then I will plot it. Uh, 
in GMT, we, we haven't seen that much in this course because we concentrate in modern mode. Modern mode is to hide that. In the GMT wrapper, is a kind of modern mode as well. So the first GID image create an image, but it did not display it. The PostScript is still open. And if you want, want to keep adding more elements to that figure, we use what we call the bang versions of the function. So instead of being plot, I do plot and with exclamation point, and it will add to the to the to the previous figure. So EZ is the variable with the data read from the shape file. We plot it and we say LW with line width, which I could have spelled it also line width, LS for line style, which I could have been spelled it as well as line style, and use dash, and LC is for line color. And again, we could have spelled it also line color. So it adds that line with a 0 0.75 points thickness, a dashed line on blue. Next, we, um, we're going to add also a focal mechanism. As an example, I create, this is a, an example of a focal mechanism using Akirish's um, convention. Oops, sorry. And um, I will convert it into a data set. Julia has types. G was a grid type. We have image types. You have data set types. You have color palette types. And you have PostScript types are the five types that we have in, in, in the, the Julia wrapper. So to create a data set top type, we have a, a convenient function that is math to the S. Yes, we will create a, a, a data set. A data set is a, is a, a table with metadata and can be multi segment as well. So I create this data set with a, well, I could have read from the disk as well, this uh, file with the focal mechanism. But for the demonstration, this is only one uh, earthquake. And we're going to plot it with the Mecca uh, mode. Again, he has to have the exclamation point because I, we are going to add. So you see, you have the Aki, it means using the Aki uh, convention, the scale, the font, uh, the fuel color, uh, the offset, and it runs that. Uh, and you can also add like we have seen also before with the uh, lines and symbols, you can add uh, a custom marker, a volcanum. So we plot, we say plot the coordinates where the marker, it's a custom volcano, the size, and then uh, the fill color and uh, ML, I forgot by now. And one new thing, we finish our plot, so now it's time to see it. And when we finish the plot and want, it, and want to see it, we say, we tell it show equals true. So let's see what it did, where we got. Yep. Okay. See, you have the same map, but now we have the easy uh, borders. We have the volcano and we have the strike slip with the title and the, and the location. So all of that, because we added to the base map, then the, the new elements and we could keep doing that for putting more text or more things as we we wish the well the algorithm to decide to, to pick the 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 projection decided to use this to use this one i'm going to close and change subject a little so uh let's look at tights it is not such a well-known thing but uh, solid earth also has tides and they are not so small as you may as we may think uh, the maximum amplitude of those tides can go up almost to 20 centimeters so like we have tides in the ocean we also have tides on the earth the solid earth also deforms for the same reasons that uh, you have tides on the ocean gmt has a model called earth tide that calculates the earth tides it takes as an argument you can take more, more option as argument but it takes as an argument uh, a time for that's the time when we want to calculate it so if i run this i will put the result again in my g elements and they calculate it their side again i want to see it so i'm going to type a very similar command as above i will add a title with the keyword title and then I type what I want 
output in the title. And if I run it, here I have it. So we have an image of the earth tides for that time of uh, time and date. We have two lobes here, like the oceanic tides. Uh, and have a color scale. See here, it goes almost, it, almost to 20 centimeters. Not that, but not very far either. Closing that. But we can also look at individual components. That was the, the grid of the, the grid for an uh, instant of the, the, from the tides all over the entire Earth. But you can also look at one point at one time. So, or at the range, for in this example, we're going to see a range of values of the Earth tide at a certain location. The location is the longitude latitude, which is the Panama Canal, and we will calculate the Earth tides for this range and see the results. Oh, see, we calculated this is a table, and this table has their columns name it. The first column is time. And then we have the three components of the of the type. So, and this is stored in that variable, which is a data set, which basically is a table with some metadata, as for example the the name, the column names, which are might be very useful. As for example, if you want to plot, I will going to plot all three components. So, the first one is plot to start the plot. And the other ones are adding, so the other ones, the next ones, need to have the exclamation point. And the last one will have the show. So, and another thing, I, I'm going to make plots of the components individually. And instead of referring these with a column number, I'm going to refer to that as a column name. So the first one is the vertical component, which will be plotted in red, line thickness 1, and add to the legend vertical component. Likewise for the others. The east component, another caller, another legend entry, and the vertical component. So, and we adding, and the last one is show. And if you do these, we have the components of the earth tide for the period that we required, and a nice uh, legend on the default location with the top right uh, corner, but we could as well tell it to put in another another place so this demonstrates that it's very handy that we some, sometimes it's very handy that we can address as a column name instead of a number which we might not even know exactly what it is without looking at the numbers well and to end with uh let's see what if you want to um, see the, the tides during an entire entire month so again i'm going to give it a range this type a little differently you can we call it a tuple uh, the three, the begin, end, and the step, the location, and then we plot just the vertical. This one plots only the vertical component, but for a period of one month. Well, and here we have it. If we are not saying that is uh, uh, solid earth tides and it did not have the numbers here, it, this would look very much like uh, a tide plot over a period of ocean tides plot over a period of one year. Okay, so I finish here this just to give as uh, examples of all the things, um, many of the things you can do with the Julia wrapper that I think the most different thing from the, the, the common line is here you can use comments that are much easier. Uh, the options have names which is much easier to remember and to understand when we read uh, a, a script. Even people that do not know when they read it, they understand what is written there. To write their own, okay, that needs a bit more of learning, but I think it's very simple to use and it gives us access, I mean, to the entire GMT. Not all of them have these, have been rapid to have Long name options, long name options is another thing we are developing in GMT, uh, hardcore GMT, but it's uh, lots of them. But this, in Julia, they're almost, they all got a name, except those they were not ported yet. But these are very few ones on, on the um, supplements package. And, uh, well, thank you, I'll end here.